Pesker, second-year man from Northwestern, and the rookie from Iowa, Ronnie Harmon. Harmon from his 11. And a flag has been thrown. Good return by Harmon. Despite that ankle injury, he ran it for 24 yards, and the captain of the special teams, Moshe Tatupu, in on the stop. In fact, the Patriots chose to have their special teams unit introduced instead of the uh, offensive or defensive line. On the return, number 87, 10-yard penalty, first down. Butch Roll called on the hold as Jim Kelly and the Bills go to work. Rob Riddick and Carl Byron are the running backs. The receiving core has been hit by injury. They're going to three, Burkett, and the tight end Metzelars, who is having his most productive season. The center, Kent Cole, flanked by Wolford and Richard Holger for the injured Ken Jones, along with the veteran Devlin. So first down from the 22 as we get underway here in Foxborough. And Kelly able to complete to Riddick. Short pickup run out by Lawrence McGrew as we check out that outstanding Patriot defensive alignment. Up front, the rookie from Toledo, Brent Williams. Toby Williams at the nose tackle and Garen Verris leading the way with uh, nine sacks on the season. Outstanding group of linebackers. And in the secondary, Ronnie Lepet who had two interceptions in the earlier game against Buffalo, has seven on the season. Second and eight. That is Riddick, number 40, in motion. Kelly looking that way. Under pressure, and fumbles. Scooped up. And Blackman, let's see, can he hold on? No. A wild sequence. The officials are discussing as to where the football will be placed. Kelly was rushed. And it's being called a safety since it carried out of the end zone. McGrew, number 50, is coming from the blind side. Wolford, the rookie, does not get out there. McGrew causes the fumble. Now Blackman, the other huge outside linebacker that really dominates for this Patriot team, all he needs to do is get possession of the ball for a touchdown. He says, come here, come here. You know if they put a handle on it, it wouldn't bounce up like that. And Blackman, Rod Ross, the defensive coordinator, says that something special is really upset with himself. So the Patriots pick up two points on the safety. Jim Kelly, who took all kinds of pressure in that earlier meeting up in Buffalo, particularly from Andre Tippett, who is out of action here today. Tippett had three and a half sacks, is immediately After under pressure. further review by the instant replay, the play stands. It is a safety. Barb Levy, you saw on the sideline, questioning one of the officials as to the interpretation of the rules. Now, all of the... Uh, uh, coaches in the National Football League and the players uh, go to a, a little seminar. The uh, league goes around and, and tells them all about the rules and regulations at the beginning of the season. Some understand them better than others. I'm talking mostly about the players. Most of the players really don't understand the rules, the technical rules, but most of the coaches do, and I'm sure that he's just questioning him as to uh, the interpretation of that one right there. So it is now a free kick following the safety, the free kick by the putter, John Kidd, with Fryer, the deep man, Dupart and Jones are the up men. And off the return on the free kick, Irving Fryer. Stopped by Bruce King, who was uh, recently signed by the Buffalo Bills. A 12-yard return. Here comes Tony Eason, along with Collins and James. And the receivers, Fryer and Morgan. Greg Beatty starting at tight end. The rookie from Stanford, Greg Hawthorne, bothered by a calf injury. And Patriots uh, hope to keep him out. So a first down from the 47. And they go to the ground. Craig James with a short pickup. Stopped by the linebacking core of the Buffalo Bills. 
Bills up front with McManny, Smurlis, and Bruce Smith who has come up with 10 sacks among the leaders in the AFC. Darrell Talley playing very well. And on the outside, Eugene Marv leads the club in tackles. And in the secondary, Derek Burrows back in the starting line of his first start since opening day, replacing Rodney Bellinger. Second and eight off the two-yard pickup by James. Eason throwing first time. Nice catch, but short of the first down. Beatty one-handing it. Strong safety, Martin Bayless, on the stop, preventing Beatty from coming up uh, with the first down. Tony Eason, who is the number two ranked quarterback behind Kent O'Brien, last week against the Rams, 36 of 52, 375 yards, setting New England club records for attempts and completions. Looking at a third down and two. James, flag has been thrown. James picking up the first down, but let's see what the call is about. The referee today is Dick Hantak. It's against the Bills. So there's Dick Hantak and his crew. And Marv, if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, this is not the way to start off the ball game. You get the opening kickoff. You fumble inside your own 20, and you give the red-hot New England Patriots uh, two points and a gift, and now they're moving offensively. Defense, number 78, five-yard penalty, first down. Ball on the right defensive end, Bruce Smith. And it's a first down for New England, just inside the Buffalo 40. The Patriots with a record of eight and three. They won five in a row. The last defeat was back on October the 12th here at Foxborough when they lost to the Jets 31-24. White Slicing inside, Trey James for a short pickup and again a flag throw. Steve Freeman, the free safety on the stop. Steve Freeman, a one-time Patriot, a fifth-round draft pick of New England back in 1975. And again, it is against Buffalo. Offsides, defense, number 76, replay the down. So the Bills, Bob, very generous here on the opening minutes, the safety and a couple of penalties. Well, when you're on the road, you do not want to start this way. Uh, the ideal way for a road team, a visiting team, is to come in, take the ball, move it down the field, and score to help take the crowd out of the game. That's not happening here today. Brett Smurlis called on the penalty. It's a first down and five at the 35. It's Collins. Collins cutting right and then left. Tony Collins uh, last week did it uh, as a receiver. Ten catches for uh, 66 yards. He's averaging only 2.9 on the ground. And he's so valuable to this team, not only as a receiver and a blocker, but as a runner. And last week went, went overlooked with that Hail Mary pass. But he caught a big fourth and seven pass in that drive to keep the touchdown drive alive. Second and three from the Buffalo 32 gone by in this first quarter. Play action. And Eason is hauled down. He tried to sidestep Darrell Talley, but Talley coming up with the sack, his second of the season. Take a look at Darrell Talley. He is right here. Now the fake, and Craig James is going to try to come over and block him. James not getting the block, and Talley gets in and makes the sack. A little play action, 32 is James, throws at him, does not go aggressively. Talley reads it and gets in and makes the sack. Normally, Craig James, a pretty good blocker, that time didn't get the job done. And a Patriot player is down. That is the right tackle, Steve Moore, shake it up. A timeout call, we'll be right back. That's the Patriots' right tackle, Steve Moore, being helped off. He's been wearing special padding to protect the rib injury. So Steve Moore, who is a big fellow, listed at 305 pounds, but closer to 320 pounds, being helped off. 
See, he's trying to put some weight on that left leg. It looks to uh, might be a knee or an ankle injury, but when you weigh 325 pounds plus, that's a huge load. And uh, Daryl uh, Haley is in the ball game replacing him. The Patriots running game not being up to par and uh, injuries in that offensive line tied in, and also the retirement of John Hanna. For a better that. So Daryl Haley now right tackle, third down at nine as we resume from the 38. Complete. Stanley Morgan, the intended receiver. Eason throwing a very hard ball. And here's Rich Camarillo coming on. Raymond Murray now sending on the punting unit. A 2 0 lead for the Patriots as Jim Kelly was clobbered. Second play from scrimmage. Don Blackburn not able to pick up uh, the ball, and it ended up going out of the end zone off a uh, bobble thought by Dr. Hiss Camarillo with pitch back. And it carries in. So they'll bring it out to the 40 yard line. A 38 yard punt by Camarillo. Back to that first series by Jim Kelly and the uh, Buffalo Bills. Wolford, 73, didn't come out to meet McGrew. That was the problem. That's why Kelly was sacked. Now, the ruling on this is if New England offense was on the field and had possession and fumbled it through the end zone, then the ball would come out to where it was last touching the field of play. No points would be awarded. That's what Marv Levy was discussing on the sideline. But when Buffalo's offense had possession and then New England touched it through the end zone, they at least get the safety. They didn't get possession, or they would have had a touchdown. So the Bills take over at their 20 yard line. Three and a half gone by in this opening quarter. Rob Riddick bumped out at the 26, hit out by Ronnie LaPet. Rob Riddick. In his fourth year out of Millersville, Pennsylvania, the surprise of the Bills training camp, Ron Harmon's holdout Pick helping up, Riddick. Yeah. Uh, Riddick's play then convinced the Bills to trade Joe Cribbs. Yeah. Well, he's played very well, Marv. As you said, beginning in training camp, uh, talking with Marv Levy, he says he's an overachiever. Uh, you hear that word so often when someone plays to the best of their ability, doesn't have all the talent, but certainly uh, he's been a big plus for the Bills this year. Burkett out to the left, top of your screen. Reed to the near side. Now Reed in motion for the second and four. Look out again, Kelly taken down. This time, the inside linebacker, Johnny Rembert. His third sack of the season. See the disgust there on Jim Kelly's face as we look at the ticker. Wilbur Esiason hitting James Brooks in an eight-yard touchdown for the Cincinnati score. And Walter Abercrombie ran one in from a yard away for Pittsburgh. Right here, it is a 2 nothing lead for New England. Third down and 16. Kelly going deep. Raymond Claiborne on the covers. Eric Richardson, the intended receiver. In that earlier game against the Patriots, Jim Kelly very confused by the coverage of New England and uh, had his problem, sacked five times, intercepted twice, and having another tough one here against the Patriots. Well, New England is number two in the entire league in pass defense, so he's going against one of the better groups. And here's John Kidd coming off a strong game against the Dolphins, averaging just under 48 per punt. A line drive, and here's Fryer. A nice return inside the 30. 34 yard punt and 18 yard return. And when we return, the Patriots with excellent. It's been a long time between victories on the road for the Buffalo Bills. They've dropped 21 in a row. 
away from home. Their last road win was back in December of 83 in Kansas City. And the Bills' last win over the Patriots was December of 81 here at Foxborough. They've lost eight straight to New England, and they're off to a, a bad start here at Foxborough, trailing 2 nothing. And the Patriots taking over first down inside the 30. Great game. Reaching out near the 25, Lucius Sanford, the outside linebacker, nine-year man from Georgia Tech, making the stop. Sanford coming back from major back surgery this year. Joe Montana had the same type of surgery. Gets all the publicity. That's the quarterbacks around the league for you. Yes, I understand that. Sanford, linebacker, coming back from very similar type of uh, surgery and doing very well. In fact, Lucius missed the first six games recovering from the back surgery. Second down and about seven. James has the first down and some more. Free safety, Steve Freeman, on the stop. First down. A reminder, we'll be selecting the Budweiser most viable player for today's game. Of course, at the uh, conclusion of the game, first down, New England from the 17-yard line. It's Tom Ramsey, the uh, third-string quarterback who signals the plays in. And a flag thrown. A little extracurricular activity on the sideline. I think it's going to be a face mask, Marv. Steve Freeman, uh, the man who tackled Collins, called on the face mask. I mentioned earlier, Freeman, a one-time Patriot, and has played very well against his uh, former teammates. Seven of his career, 23 interceptions have come. Personal foul against the Patriots. Face mask. Face mask. Number 43. Number 43. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. I don't think First he, down. I don't think he had his face mask. He had it above on the helmet uh, and kind of pulled his helmet down. It did look as though, from an official's point of view, that it was uh, the way the helmet came down. But let's take another look. His, his hand is above the face mask. Maybe on the part that's attached to the helmet, and that may be where he pulled it down. And it is called on Martin Bayless. Freeman made the tackle, but Bayless hit with a penalty, so a first down at the Buffalo 13. Greg James inside the 10. The line of scrimmage was the 13 on the play. Was Bentley James and Manning. Sanford combining on the stop. And the Patriots uh, looking to develop the running game here in the first quarter. Well, they're trying to get some kind of a semblance of a running game going. You know, it's a nice day here today, Mar, but uh, there are going to be some December days when you're not going to be able to throw the ball as well as the Patriots have thrown it. You need a good running game in December and in the playoffs to have that balanced attack, and especially on a bad day. And last week, James ran it three times for minus yardage against the Rams. Second and two. Collins. Ray Bentley, the inside linebacker. Man out of Central Michigan. He was signed as a free agent. He had spent three years in the USFL, making the stop. And was a good linebacker in the USFL, Marv. Uh, came over to... Uh, the Bills was not playing a lot. Uh, they brought in George Cumby uh, from Green Bay, and then uh, Bentley uh, showed that he could do the job and is in there doing a good job right now. It is a third down and one. Just inside the 10. And a flag is thrown. Irving Fryer, the intended receiver, covered by Derek Burrow. There's Burroughs over here as he's going to run a slant to the inside. Now, there'll be nobody on the inside. Watch as you see what Eason sees. Clear a sailing to the inside. Burroughs is just going to get there a little bit too soon. Grabs onto him and holds onto him and then tries to fling himself Defense in front of him. Defense holding. Number 29, five yards, first down. And sets it as a first and goal from inside the five. So. The call against Burroughs. Burroughs was a number one draft choice last year and has really not played up to that uh, uh, 
that draft uh, had some problems with his confidence, and they started in here today ahead of uh, Rodney Bellinger. And penalties have hurt the Bills here in the first quarter. Touchdown. Greg James kept going wider and wider and was able to get himself in. That's the 33rd touchdown for the Patriots this year and only the seventh running on the ground. As you said, Marv, he dipped to the inside. Now that set up Collins block, as you see right there. Not a pretty block, but just gets enough of Sanford to allow James to bounce the to the outside. Give the Collins record. a lot of credit for that touchdown. Tony Eason is holding. And here is Tony Franklin, who has had a sensational season. Leading score in the NFL coming in. And make it 113 points for Franklin. But again, a flag thrown. The Bills already hit for six penalties in this first quarter, and only seven minutes have gone by. The past couple of years, Marv, the Bills have been one of the most penalized teams in the National Football League, if not the most. This year, under Hank Boa, they have uh, improved that a great deal. We have unnecessary roughness. On the defense, number 76, point is good. That was Fred on the kickoff. You saw Bruce Smith, 78, walk by and just kind of wave his hand in disgust at the, uh, the uh, referee hand tax. So there is Spurless, who was uh, hit on a uh, call for the second time. And New England has jumped in front, 9-0. Tony Franklin, a man who now hides the uh, right shoe because uh, at times he'd uh, put it somewhere along the uh, New England bench and at times he's had it stolen thievery on the field so Tony not taking any chances these days getting set to kick it off someone asked uh, Franklin does it hurt to kick barefoot he said well I'm a big sissy if it hurts I wouldn't be doing it <laughs> it's all in fun though it's uh he uh, speaks very highly of his teammates here in New England as opposed to uh, his teammates in Philadelphia yes. where uh, things weren't quite so nice. And Franklin able to put it in the end zone. Nice kick, though, for Franklin because uh, the Patriots were helped by that penalty uh, that was tacked on on the extra point attempt, the penalty on Smurla, so he's able to just kick it out of sight. Well, Denver in front of the Giants by the score of 3-0 in the second. Chicago Bears benefiting from a safety. Cincinnati over Minnesota, 14-3. A touchdown by Abercrombie holding up for Pittsburgh. Detroit leading Tampa Bay. First down of the 20 for the Buffalo Bills, having a very rough time of it here in the first quarter. Riddick with a head fake. But Roland James did not go for it. The Buffalo Bills do not look like they are all on the same page offensively at the start of the game. As you see, another penalty against Carl Byram, the rookie fullback, who moved a little bit too soon. We have an illegal shift against the offense. Two men's moving at the same time. Penalty has declined. Second down. Now there is Carl Byram, a rookie from Mississippi Valley State. One of the problems offensively, Marv, that the Bills may be having is that they're looking into the, you see the long shadows on the players of the field. They're looking into that sun, and they're also going into whatever wind is blowing here today. It's a little bit more difficult. in motion and again to the ground and it is Byron out to the 30 stopped by Roland James that is certainly nothing they can adjust to certainly uh, you play uh, 
a practice in the sun, looking into the sun all the time, but it is just a little bit different, and, and uh, you know, they just don't look, the Bills do not look like they're all in sync at this time. Buffalo collecting its first first down of the day, seven minutes left in this first quarter. So the Bills, with their third drive of the day, they have begun at the 22, the 20, and again at the 20. run out of the 35 by LaPette, but again a flag tossed. And let's see what this one is about. Busy start for the referee, Dick Hantak. Holding, offense, number 62, Repeat the down. Mark first down. Trainowitz, who uh, just came on, a second-year man from Nebraska, and another penalty against the Bills. I would think that head coach Marv Levy is beginning to say, hey, this is ridiculous. This can be very frustrating, too, for an offense, not only for uh, for uh, anybody in the stadium or watching at home, but for every player on that offensive team, they're in there saying, come on, let's straighten this out and get something going. That is a first and 20. Kelly with the screen. Riddick. So he has run out, Roland James among those surrounding Rob Riddick. Kelly running all the way over there. Looked as though he was yelling at Hall, the center. Come on, get up there and make a block. Uh, it's one of the things that Kelly has done since he's been in Buffalo. He has not been afraid to come out and admonish some of the players that were not doing what he thought they should be doing. Jim says, I'm not a big head and not conceited. He said, I just want to win, and I want to motivate these guys, and if it takes me getting on their rear ends about it, that's what I'm going to do. And now has a second and 17, back at the 23. Patriots, nine, Bills, nothing. Got to go sideline. Claiborne providing the coverage on Burkett. With Butler out of action, suffering that broken leg, catching the touchdown pass last week against Miami, Burkett is the one deep threat. Although Jimmy Teal, who has been injury hit, is available for action here today. Burkett averaging 21 yards per catch. Big receiver, 6'4", and after that incompletion, Kelly said something to him on the way back to the huddle. It's going to take him a while, man. Third down, 17. And he's able to complete. Andre Reed stopped by Raymond Claiborne and a first down for Buffalo. Reed is up here. Now you watch, he's going to come down the middle of the field and break across to the inside. You see right now, the middle of the field is open except for the player at the deep right side of your screen. He's going to play deep middle. Reed gets to the inside of Claiborne and then comes across the middle of the field, and it's an excellent throw by Kelly, and maybe that completion will get this offense on track. 18-yard gain. Andre Reed, a question mark. He's been bothered by a, a knee problem. Riddick. Hard driving run by Rob Riddick, Darren Burris, and Don Blackman combining on the stop. Rob Riddick is averaging four and a half yards per carry. That's uh, among the best averages in the AFC. Picked up five on the play. Riddick replacing the injured Greg Bell and has played very well. Second down and five. Marv Albert, Bob Greasy from Foxborough. Riddick again slanting to the left and is just short of the first down. Burris and Marion making the stop. Fred Marion, incidentally, a teammate of Jim Kelly at the University of Miami and was delighted to come up with an interception of Kelly five weeks ago. Well, there are two uh, defensive backs in that secondary for the Patriots that were at school at Miami with Kelly. Also, Ronnie LaPette, uh, the cornerback, is, is there. And uh, two fine defensive players going against one of the best quarterbacks ever to come out of the University of Miami. Third down and a one. That's Riddick in motion. And Kelly is stopped again. 
and he fired the ball down in disgust as Johnny Rembert came up with his second sack of this first quarter. Johnny Rembert, right here, number 52, watch now as he slides to the left, and then he goes right in between as the guard blocks to the outside. Kelly, very frustrated that he's not getting the protection in time to throw the football. As you see, Rembert splits the two offensive linemen. They get there late, and it's another sack. And it is the third sack of the day for New England. And a punting situation. Irving Fryer is back. Here's the punt by John Kidd. And a beautiful submarine across the 25-yard line and a flag is thrown down 41-yard punt five-yard return it has been a very slow moving first quarter a host of penalties and all against Buffalo Illegal block in the back, under return, number 59, first down. So this one against the Patriots, Steve Doy, backup linebacker, recently uh, added to the squad out of the University of New Hampshire, called on the penalty. And they didn't have to call very far as you take a look at Jim Kelly and what he has to say. Uh, that's the problem when you come to a franchise that has been losing for a lot of years. They kind of get used to it. They don't like it, but that's just the way it's been over the, over the years. The Patriots first down from their 19. Morgan. Out to the 23, picked up four on the play. Stanley Morgan, who comes in with 1019 pass receiving yards. That is tops in the AFC, the and look at his stats six. last week against the L.A. Rams. Just outstanding. This man right here is the first man you have to concern yourself with defensively when you play the Patriots. You've got to take the big play away from Morgan, and then you have to concern yourself with Tony Collins coming out of the backfield. Second down and six. Stephen Starring has come on. That's Starring, 81, in motion. Lining up down the slot, Greg James on a sweep. Out to the 25-yard line. So a two-yard advance. It'll be a third down and four. Bentley and Bellis forced them out. As we swing around the ticker, Raul Allegre, who had the five field goal day last week for the Giants, has tied it in the second quarter. Cincinnati maintaining that lead over Minnesota. Long two. Pittsburgh over Cleveland, 7-0, and Detroit in front of Tampa Bay by the score of 7-3. Three minutes to go in this first quarter. Patriots 9, Bills nothing, third down and two. Close to the first down marker. So Tony Eason is showing us the short stuff here at the start. That oh, was a smart play. It was only third and three. He looked downfield for his receivers and the zone coverage. Everybody was dropping back and swinging out to a man like James or Collins. Let him uh, juke and uh, dive and do whatever they need to do and possibly pick up their first down. And he did pick it up. England first down, just inside their 30-yard line. Tony Eason last year missed six weeks with that separated shoulder. Steve Brogan took over, did well until he suffered an injury, and then Eason returned and finished strong. He's been bothered by the bruised ribs this season. What a year he's had. able to get away as he was chased hitting Collins and that'll be no gain on the play Charles Rome following Collins from right to left Charles Rome. and the left guard Paul it's Fairchild is hurt what Fairchild the man filling the shoes of the retired John Hanna not an easy task 
replacing a future Hall of Famer, and uh, his departure has certainly been felt. It certainly has. Guy Mar, 75, comes in to take his place. A lot of speculation in New England why the Patriot running game is not working as well, and that man right there is one of the reasons. One reason having a great year throwing the ball. Easton able to get away and has the first down and some more. Against the Bills in their earlier meeting, Easton had the best rushing game of his professional career. 55 yards on four carries. Had a little chat there with uh, Jim <laughs> Kelly. As we look, go inside and look at Smurless on Brock. Now, getting a little penetration, chases him outside as Smith, 78, did not keep his containment, something that Smith had talked about coming into the game, that Eason has the ability to run. Unlike uh, Marino last week, Marino does not run, as uh, Eason shows you a little bit of his athletic skills, but uh, have to contain Tony Eason because he will take off and run. And he ran for 22 yards, first down at midfield. Collins on a short pickup. Down to a minute and 25 remaining. And this first quarter, Ray Bentley on the stop. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New England Patriots and the National Football League is prohibited. Odd statistic in this first quarter, of course, the 22-yard run by Easton Held, but Patriots have run for 44 yards and passed for only 21. On the draw, James. For a first down, inside the Buffalo 40, Lucius Sanford making the tackle. That's a play you don't see a lot of anymore. It was a straightaway dive play. It was more of a dive than it was a ball, but you don't see that often in the National Football League anymore. At the Buffalo 38. You see a straight ahead handoff and nobody blocked 78 Smith. It was almost like a sucker play. You don't block him, you try to hit inside of him and that's pretty if it works and it's ugly <laughs> for the running back if it doesn't work. Believe it or not, time is actually running down and this first quarter <laughs> is about to conclude. It has been endless. A uh, host of penalties called on Buffalo. A long first quarter of football here at Foxborough. And that is the end of one. The Patriots leading Buffalo 9-0. Having lost some weight and also feeling that, that the confidence that Raymond Berry and the rest of the team gives him, especially when he mishits one or misses a field goal, uh, is so much uh, of a morale booster than it was in uh, Philadelphia where things were not the same and all teams don't kick, treat all kickers the same and uh, certainly the, the environment and the attitude here is very conducive to uh, a field goal kicker. Franklin has done better each year that he has been here. Having a, a great season, hit three of three last week against the Rams. Well, Patriots Obviously, uh, controlling matters in that first quarter. So the first quarter went only 15 minutes. <laughs> that is in, uh, in playing time. All right, second quarter underway. And here's Fryer for another New England first down. Martin Bellis, a strong safety on the stop of Irving Fryer. One of the heroes last week. He caught that Hail Mary touchdown pass for the game winner. Also uh, caught another touchdown. He now has six on the season. This is the tenth play of the drive. The Patriots first down at the Buffalo 28-yard line. James and Collins lined up in the eye. Collins inside the 25 and we are set for an update let's go to Ahmad Rashad at NFL 86 all right Marvin Houston the Oilers score on this four-yard pass from Warren Moon 
to Alan Pickett, the former Notre Dame running back. They lead the hapless Colts 10 to 3 in the second quarter. By the way, the Colts haven't won since beating Houston last year. And the Colts, certainly the leading contenders in the uh, Vinny Tester Hurdy sweepstakes. Fred James. Another short pickup. We talked to you a little bit earlier about people in New England wondering why the Patriots don't run as well. Maybe one of the reasons is the slant of their backs. Now look right here. You see the two backs. They're slanted this way. Now the defensive line sees that and they'll slant their linemen the same way as the backs are lined up. This way they say, well, they're going to run to the left. And they do run to the left. Now they don't do that all the time, but it's enough that the defensive coordinators around the league might be one of the reasons they're not running as well. Third down and three. Eason getting the time. Couldn't find anyone. And down he goes at the 20-yard line. And we receive word on Steve Moore, a fractured ankle. Well, that's a tough loss for the Patriots uh, after having uh, lost in the retirement of uh, John Hanna. Moore was playing fairly well, even though he was... Uh, overweight there's no way other way to say it uh, at 325 plus uh, some say up to close to 350 he was overweight now Daryl Haley has to come on and uh, Haley is a second round draft choice has been on the ball club five years certainly should be able to do the job and here's Tony Franklin with a 37 yard attempt he's hit on 12 straight field goals make it 13 in a row so with three minutes gone by, second quarter, it's the Patriots 12, and the Bills nothing. And the Patriots for the 12 nothing lead for early second quarter. Franklin's kickoff returned by Harmon out across the 40-yard line. Ed Reynolds, backup linebacker on the stop, the rookie from Iowa, Ronnie Harmon, returning at 20 yards, and the Bills will try again we mentioned among their many difficulties just a ball club that uh, the last two years went two up and 14 down and they have not been able to win on the road and have not been able to beat the Patriots they've lost eight straight to New England five weeks ago they lost to the Patriots in Buffalo 23 to 3 game that was over at halftime 17 nothing at the half from the 40. That's Byron in motion. And here's Riddick. I think Marv Levy's trying to take some of the pressure off Kelly by having him uh, go to the running backs. Well, I think I don't think Marv Levy is getting that involved in the offensive uh, game plan, the play calling. Bob Leahy, the quarterback coach, is calling all the plays with uh, Jim Ringo, the line coach, on the sideline. Marv Levy just wants to get into it and try to motivate the players, give them some sense of direction, not only for this year, but also for next year. He's a very, very bright, intelligent man, and I'm sure that uh, he's going to get the job done, if not this year, then next year. And Riddick tripped up by Lawrence McGrew. Marv Levy, just your everyday NFL coach, holds a master's degree from Harvard in uh, English history. <laughs> Well, I, I saw him before the game, and I said, uh, I said, you really get a master's degree from Harvard? He says, he says yeah. He says, I really enjoyed that Harvard-Yale game yesterday. I yeah. said, you're probably the only NFL coach in the league that, first of all, has a master's, and second, was watching the game. Third down play intended for Byron. Blackman on the coverage. So a quickie series for the Bills. Carl Byron was averaging about four yards a carry, making his second NFL start. Last week, his first, and he caught his first NFL touchdown. So the punting unit is in. John Kidd in his third year out of Northwestern. And he's had several big days against the Patriots. Irving's flyer back at his 13. Fair catch at the 12. 
Four minutes gone by. Second quarter. It's been all New England. A 42-yard punt. We'll be right back. Steve Grogan on the sideline for the Patriots. Raymond Berry says he's not a backup. We have two starting quarterbacks on our team. And uh, the co-MVP on this team last year was Steve Grogan. And it takes a special type of person to be able to uh, step back and let a younger man go in and play because uh, Grogan the last couple of years, whenever he has gone in, has certainly done very well. And it certainly uh, means a lot to his ball team. As the Jets can attest to two, uh, some six weeks back when uh, Grogan started for the injured Eason. Here's Craig James across the 15. Martin Ballas, the strong safety on the stop. You heard the whistles, I would think, uh, being blown emphatically as uh, the Bills wrestled it free. But they will bring it back. The ball spotted across the 15-yard line. Setting the Bills... Uh, defensively, they're going with McNatty and Smurlis and Smith up front. Linebackers Sanford, Marr, Bentley, and Talley. And of the secondary, Burroughs drawing the starting assignment today. Freeman, Bayless, and Rooms in that secondary. Second down, seven. Short pickup for Craig James. New England with Pete Brunt at center. Ron Wooten and now Guy Morris at the guards. Paul Fairchild was shaken up in the first quarter. The tackles Brian Holloway on the left and Darrell Haley coming on for Steve Moore who went out with a fractured ankle in the first quarter. Third out and five from the E team. Eason throwing, and he had Collins wide open. Sanford able to bang him out of bounds, and a long gainer for Tony Eason, a 31-yard pass play. Tony Collins is the second leading receiver on the ball club. He's right here. He cuts 52 passes. Now he's going to come out of the backfield and go deep to the outside, and both these receivers will come and run slant patterns to the inside. Collins coming out of the backfield. Sanford tries to get a jam on him, and Collins just gets through him. Now he's wide open, deep to the outside. The ball was actually thrown a little bit late because Collins, because uh, Eason had to move around a little bit, but uh, good uh, call on the sideline by Steve Grover. Osi Katupu has come on for the first time. First down at midfield. Intended for Stanley Morgan, Charles Rose on the coverage, Irving Fryer on the sideline, and uh, the team doctors are checking him out. We'll pass on a report as uh, soon as uh, we get it. Giants of Denver, tied at three on field goals by Carlos and Allegre. Chicago maintaining that uh, two nothing lead on Green Bay. Now Cincinnati in front by the score of 21 to 10. Cleveland is tied Pittsburgh. Houston leading Indianapolis. The Colts coming at 0 and 11. Second down 10. Craig James back in the backfield with Tony Collins. And Easton just looking to get it away. And that will be intentional grounding called on Tony Easton. Take a look at Eason as he's looking for his tight end, Beatty. Good coverage on the play by Daryl Talley. And now just throws it into the ground to avoid... Intentional grounding on the quarterback. Loss of down. Ten-yard penalty. Third down. It's kind of an unusual intentional grounding because not many of those are called when you're in the confines of the pocket. Normally it's when you're running uh, along the sideline somewhere or scrambling around, but... Uh, Eason not able to find anybody open and just, you know, one of the problems, and I've been there many times, Marv, is a quarterback looking into that Let's sun. You cannot see point as point well. You have to kind of uh, squint your eyes. Yeah. Obviously, you'd like to put your hand up and uh, shade your eyes, but uh, 
you don't always have time to do that. Is that one of the reasons that this stadium was not one of your favorites? I don't like the stadium too well. It maybe have something to do with the Patriots and their ability. <laughs> Collins. The ball carrier stopped by Sanford, and we have received word on Irving Fryer. I mentioned that he'd been uh, being looked at uh, by the uh, team physicians a moment ago. Sprained shoulder, and he may be out the rest of the day. It's an AC joint, and that would be a tough loss. You know, the Patriots, for most of the year, had been free of injuries, and then all of a sudden, they kind of hit at the same time, and uh, they're well balanced, but they're like anybody else. You just cannot go too deep with injuries. Rich Camarillo looking to bounce back from a off day against the Rams with a good one. Ron Pitts from his 14. Sparkling return by Pitts, the first-year player out of UCLA. Steve Doig on the stop, a 44-yard punt at a 19-yard return. Irving Fryer being escorted back to the New England locker room, so he is through for the day after injuring his shoulder. Not only will they miss him at wide receiver, but one of the uh, outstanding punt returners in the league, Marv, uh, the Patriots really not weak at any position. They have uh, Fryer and Stefan Starring on the special teams that can break it at any time, and then excellent receivers and a, a host of defensive players. Good defense, well balanced. Buffalo takes over from their 37. And a fumble by Riddick. Penalty marker down. Patriots have recovered, and then it is uh, kicked around a bit. <laughs> Circus atmosphere. Steve Nelson picking the ball up. I believe that he is going to be offsides. <laughs> well, Jim Kelly is reacting as if he is about to uh, get think, the football back. I think Jim knows what's going on. Take a look right here at Steve Nelson on a blitz, just tries to get in there a little too soon, and then doesn't try to get back. Now the ball's out. Steve says, "Well, as long as I'm over here, I may as well do something," and then picks it up. Wolford grabs a hold of him, and now he's looking at the lateral. To I'm laughing because Steve Nelson uh, offside. Defense, number 57, five-yard penalty, replay the down, first and five. Steve, Steve knew that he wasn't going to outrun anybody. He's 13 years in the league and is an excellent player, the inspirational leader of that, that defense. He does a great job. And he's been bothered by a left ankle uh, problem. He's been lifting around. Really needs the recovery time during the offseason. First down and five from the 42. Play action. And Kelly throwing deep. Raymond Claymore on the interception. And what a terrific play by Claymore. with his second interception of the season. Kelly was trying to hold Fred Marion with the play action fake. Nelson's going to blitz on the play. And the ball is going to be thrown deep over Marion's head. Right here. Jimmy Teal, the intended receiver, Claiborne, an outstanding interception. That'll be one of the best you'll ever see right there. So the Patriots take over from the 13-yard line. Jimmy Teal was just activated on Friday. The intended receiver as Kelly try to go long. Ned Beatty, the tight end. So Beatty, the rookie from Stanford, with his second reception of the day. The strong safety, Martin Bellis. On the stop, it's a four-yard advance. It'll be a second and six. At the 17-yard line, Beatty, the leading tight end receiver in the nation last year. He's an outstanding all-around athlete. And the only healthy tight end on the Patriots roster. They have uh, Willie Scott, who is injured. Hawthorne is injured. Lynn Dawson, of course, is injured. He's the only one healthy. James looking for the hole. Again, Marv, the slant of the two backs telling the Buffalo Bills that they might be going that way. And Sean McNanny uh, was in the way of Craig James. McNanny on the stop. James.
Adams now 35 yards on the ground, 10 carries, third down and seven. James heads for the sideline. Just under seven minutes to go in this first half, and the Patriots lead it 12-0. Eason rifling one intended for Cedric Jones. Eason wasn't too happy with that uh, incompletion as if Cedric Jones may have uh, been in the wrong spot. He had him wide open. That's why he's so upset. He saw a big play coming. It was a slant, and obviously either Cedric Jones or one of the receivers ran the wrong route, and Eason reacting uh, with his uh, frustration. Camarillo back at his one. Ron Pitts in single safety out of midfield. Here's Pitts. Mosi Tatupu in on the stop. A 41-yard punt by Camarillo. Join us Thursday for the tradition of Thanksgiving Day football right here on NBC Sports. Your day will kick off with NFL 86 starting 3.30 Eastern time with host Bob Costas and then the Seattle Seahawks will take on the Dallas Cowboys. That's Thursday, 3.30 right here on NBC. Dick Enberg and Nolan Olson will be joined by Bob and his telestrator on Thursday. Be there. Pack it under my arm and head on out there. What a lovely way to spend Thanksgiving. <laughs> Dick Merlin and the telestrator. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll be watching, of course. Metzelars on the reception and then bubbled and the Patriots recover. see some frustration in that face right there as Kelly tries to do some stuff to motivate this team. He's got a picture in his locker in, uh, in the locker room of a, of a Superman with his face attached to it. He can't do it all himself as Metzlars gets the ball knocked loose. The ball is batted around, but turnovers have stopped the last two drives of the Buffalo Bills. So Claiborne on the recovery Big hit by James and Rember combining on the six foot seven tight end, Keith Metzelar. And the Patriots uh, with another takeaway. First down at the 41. And he's an incomplete, but a flag has been thrown. against the Buffalo Bills. Offside, defense, number 78, five-yard penalty, first down. And that is the eighth penalty of the day called on Buffalo. Bruce Smith, the right defensive end. The man penalized, so Buffalo called for eight. And the Patriots for only two. It is a first and five for New England from their 46-yard line. Quick opener for James. Smith on the stop as we swing around the scoreboard. Checking out our 10-minute ticker. Giants and Broncos remain at the 3-3. Cincinnati now 21-17 over Minnesota. And Pittsburgh and Cleveland tied at 14. Walter Amber on a 38-yard run. His second touchdown of the day. Second down and two. Houston with the uh, sideline completion for starring. And a first down. Charles Rome on the stop, and we're set for another Ahmad Rashad update. Let's go to NFL 86. All right, Mark, in Cleveland, here's that score. The Steelers' Walter Abercrombie takes the pitch, goes around right in for 38 yards, and the score is second on the day. They're midway through the second quarter, and the score's all tied at 14-all. Very 
Thanks, Jamad. Here are the New England Patriots. A 12 0 lead on the Buffalo Bills as you see 540 to go in this first half. Eason for James. Eason looking deep, couldn't find anyone, so uh, went to James. James tripped up by the inside linebacker Ray Bentley. It's kind of interesting to sit here and watch Steve Krogan. Grogan call the plays for Eason because that is a play that Grogan likes to run down in this area of the field. It was a trap pass to the weak side. Looked down the middle of the field for Tony Collins. Was not open and he jumped it off. Now on the right side, given the signals is Ramsey. Grogan in the middle of your screen uh, talking with Morgan. And the thing that Barry says is he's a, he's a beyond reproach. Nobody doubts his ability so they can talk to him honestly. Back to the ground for Collins. No gain on the play. Eugene Marr making the stop. Eason now 10 for 14 for 86 yards. Grogan will call the plays uh, that Tony likes to have called. Obviously, he doesn't call. Uh, Grogan won't call the plays that he likes necessarily, that Tony doesn't like. But, but Raymond Berry says, now wait a minute. He says, there are going to be some times that we're going to have to force feed him and give him some of the stuff just to make him a better quarterback. And one of those things was throwing the ball deeper. He didn't like to throw that deep, and he's doing it very well this year. Off the third and two, here is James. Incomplete. Intended for Stanley Morgan. And the crowd reacting negatively. James uh, looking for a penalty call. And Morgan, you're going to see it right here. Now it's Burroughs. He's going to act like he's going to block him. Okay, now it's pass time. He's holding him. Look at him. Morgan cannot get away. Now the official was right there. Well, there was, the ball was not in the air, but he was obviously it was a pass, and he was holding him. And uh, he cannot do that. And James has had success with the option. He's one for three this year, including a a touchdown pass. Tony Franklin, who earlier connected for uh, a 37-yard field goal attempt, now trying from 47. And he has it. His 14th consecutive field goal. That is a New England record of the Patriots at... Tony Franklin chalking up the points. That's seven on the day. Has 100 and 19, the leading scorer in the National Football League. Came in with a wide margin in front of Kevin Butler of the Bears, who has 87 points going in and has not scored yet today. He's involved in that 2 nothing game with Green Bay. And this is Steve Tasker. Run down across the 30-yard uh, line. Tasker, a man was picked up on waivers earlier this month from the Houston Oilers in his second season out of Northwestern. Cedric Jones in on the tackle and the Bills will try again. You know, Marv talking about Franklin being a leading scorer in the league credits Guy Morris, his snapper, with being probably the best snapper in the National Football League. Of course, I don't know a place kicker that doesn't say that about a center, but Morris is one of the finest. And of course, Tony Eason being the holder gives him a lot of credit also. Trey Reed in motion. That's Byram. Well, Byram spinning, but stopped by Don Blackman. Jim Kelly trying to establish a running game to set up the pass. And he has been held in check. He's only four for eight, 33 yards. Been hammered pretty good. Patriots controlling the play here in the first half. Second down and nine. Riddick. Picked up a couple. Blackman and Nelson on the stop. Now the free safety Fred Marion is the man who calls the defensive signals uh, for the New England Patriots. And uh, we're able to pick it up with a sideline microphone. So take a listen off this uh, next play. What he'll do is Buffalo will send in their three or four wide receivers and the nickel and dime package. Six defensive backs will come in. He'll tell them where to go. See if we can pick it up. Well, he went 
for the hand signal. <laughs> and Kelly is short of the first down. Raymond Claiborne on the stop. Nine-yard run by Kelly. Well, wouldn't you know, when we go in to get some, some audio signals from Fred Marion, Jim Kelly had his men lined up in a situation that was good for the coverage and the, the position that uh, Marion's men were lined up also. No audibles were needed, and Fred just left them where they were. You mean our audio mics can't pick up the hand signals? <laughs> Not that time. All right, Kid will punt for the fourth time today. Stephen Starring back deep, replacing the injured Irving Fryer, but we're down to the two-minute warning. So the score here at Foxborough, Patriots 15. The Bills, nothing. Capacity crowd, 61,000 here at Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. Marv Albert with Bob Greasy. Two minutes to go in this first half. Patriots 15, the Bills nothing. And we're a kid getting set to punt from his 25-yard line. Starring back deep for New England. Good one by Kidd. Starring. 15 yard line. And out across the 18. So Buffalo to the offense. 47 yard punt, 7 yard return. Dale Hillisbury on the stop of Stephen Starring. Rich Carlos hit from 32 yards away. Earlier from 40 for a 6 3 Denver lead. A matchup of two clubs that are. 9 and 2 Chicago now up 9 nothing Cincinnati 21 17 couple of touchdowns for Stanley Wilson Bernie Kozar hitting Ozzie Newsom on a 21 yard pass play Cleveland leads Pittsburgh Houston over Indianapolis Detroit in front of Tampa Bay first down from the 25 yard line Great game. stop back behind the line Lucia Sanford and Eugene Marr on the stop. Patriots at eight and three. They've won five in a row. The last loss back on October the 12th here at Foxborough, losing to the Jets. James on the swing. Out to the 29-yard line. And took a pop from Marr. Burroughs also involved. There's Derek Burroughs, number... 29. And a timeout called by the Patriots with a minute 10 remaining in this first half. When we resume, it'll be a third down and five. We'll be back in a moment. Third down and five for the Patriots. And Eason connects with Collins for the first down. Sanford on the stop. Patriots in the hurry up offense. Just under one minute left in this first half. First down from the 38. And Eason throws it away. Looking to stop the clock to regroup. Stanley Morgan in the area, so he's able to get away with it. And we have 51 seconds to go. I really don't understand that. Uh, two timeouts left for the Patriots. Uh, Patriots in a two minute offense, but really not taking any big chances, Mark. The passes that Eason has been throwing are safe passes. He calls the play, looks downfield to see if there's anything there, and then uh, has hit James uh, and Collins on the last two plays out of the backfield. The stat line on Eason, 12 for 17, 103 yards. Second down and 10. Big rush. And it is Bruce Smith coming up with his 11th sack of the season. He is among the leaders in the AFC. Bruce Smith, second year out of Virginia Tech, the number one choice in last year's draft. Timeout. Buffalo, their first timeout. So the Bills stopping the clock. Bruce was working on a little move there over yes. East, and he was, uh, I don't know whether he was dancing or what it was, but it really was. It's, it was he's too big a man to be doing that, let's put it that way. Not quite out of the levitation school of moves. Barb Levy on the sideline, really doing more observing during the games than he is uh, coaching. Uh, 
He does take an active part during the week in the special teams. He wants to get more involved there, but uh, mostly during the games, it's more uh, uh, making the decisions whether we go to, for a field goal or whether we uh, punt the ball away or exactly uh, uh, you know, what we're trying to get done. Marv Levy had an interesting uh, first day on the job three weeks ago. Started with a one hour and 45 minute ride from his hotel to Rich Stadium, a, a trip that normally takes about 15 minutes. He said some guy at the front desk of the hotel gave him instructions <laughs> on how to get to the stadium and forgot to tell him about the last turn. <laughs> he said, you'll run right into the stadium. Don't worry about it. So he, instead of uh, going to Mile Strip Road in Buffalo, he wound up by uh, Lake Erie. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to get it going. Yeah, he always Third down at 22. 40 seconds remaining of the half. And Collins on the reception, but just four yards short of the first down. Martin Bellis made the tackle. And timeout by Buffalo with 37 seconds remaining of the half. Barb Levy. Uh, coming into the Bills is really not that unfamiliar with the players, Marv, having done the broadcast uh, on the preseason road games for the last four years. So uh, talking with him, he says, I really knew Buffalo better than I knew any team in the National Football League. And so it was an advantage for him coming in. He has made some personnel changes in the two weeks that he's been here. So trying to get some special team players in that he feels uh, can help him immediately. In fact, Marv spent a couple of years as a NBC commentator. He uh, did work one preseason game with a fellow by the name of John Brody and myself. And uh, tough day. We had Marv and Marv and uh, Brody's looking left and right. He didn't know what was happening. <laughs> Very disconcerting. Mm. What he asked uh, Levy if uh, he could put the run and shoot in for Jim Kelly. He says he didn't think that Kelly would survive the run and shoot in the National Football League. He was sacked over 100 times in two years in the USFL. And so I don't think you're going to see a steady diet of run and shoot in uh, Levy's offense next year. And the puck by Camarillo was blocked. So the Bills with a break. 29 seconds remaining, first half. Now the clock has stopped. Buffalo calling for a timeout, their final timeout. Camarillo has been blocked two other times this year, both times coming against Seattle. And we just mentioned, as that's Tasker, number 89, that makes the block, that Levy has taken the grasp and hold of the special teams and has been working with them. And Tasker was one of the players that he brought in from Houston to improve the special team's play. So you can see the results of uh, Marv's work uh, right here in this game. And Buffalo first down at the New England 22. And Kelly in trouble. Could not find anyone and then a dangerous pass. And he got away with it. Bad exactly play. Right. Bad play by Jim Kelly. Kelly trying to make something happen, and this is the problem when you're the, the main guy and you're, 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 uh, the people around you will say are not as strong maybe as Kelly is trying to lift everybody up, make them play better. Kelly waiting for somebody. He had Metzlars open in the middle of the field, but by the time Metzlars was open, Kelly was already running, and the thing you don't want to do is turn it over. 18 seconds left. Second, 14. 26. He can't find anyone. Brett Williams all over Kelly. Now Kelly was calling time out. Time out. Buffalo, their third time out. And apparently that is now their third time out. Kelly is looking downfield. He wants to throw the ball quickly because he always sets after three steps, loses his footing, and then slips down. Now, New England was not doing anything defensively. They dropped eight players back. It's a short area. It was inside the 20, so you've got eight players in a small area. There was no receiver open, and Kelly just uh, very uh, smartly called timeout. And that is the fifth sack of the day 
for the Patriots. Blackman and Williams will share this one. So Blackman now has seven on the season, and Brent Williams with six and a half. We said a little earlier the Patriots have the second best pass defense in the National Football League. Kelly can't do it by himself, and uh, you've got to give some credit to New England. Uh, they had everybody covered that time, and uh, Kelly just took the sack. I don't think Jim's playing as well as he has either, Barb. Uh, uh, he's up against one of the best defenses around. I think he may be trying to do too much. So here is Scott Norwood attempting a 49-yard field goal. He was two for three last week against Miami. In fact, he missed from 46, but hit from 52. Line drives it, and it's good. Scott Norwood thrilling it through, so the Bills get something out of it. Well, and the first man out there, too, is the quarterback, because Kelly is the man that's supposed to put points on the board, and if you don't get the seven, at least don't make a mistake, come out with the three, and that's a big three points to go into halftime with for the Bills. Scott Norwood in his second year out of James Madison. Talking to his receivers right there, Burkett and Reed. Bill Warren, I said a little earlier that it's going to take a while for Kelly to really get comfortable, not only in the offense, but also in the National Football League and the style of defenses they play. He said the defenses over here are not nearly, uh, are, are much better. The defenses in the USFL weren't nearly as good as what we have in the National Football League, and it's going to take him some time. Bob Leahy, the quarterback coach, said it's going to take two to three years. Jim says, hey, ain't going to take that long. And, uh, but he's, uh, he certainly has come in much further along, we'll say, than, than most quarterbacks coming into the NFL because of his experience with, uh, with the uh, USFL. And here is Norwood. They have now called it officially a 48-yard field goal. So the Bills now trail 15 to 3, four seconds to go in this first half. Norwood putting it on the ground. And one of the up men getting it out to uh, the 40-yard line. Cedric Jones on the return as this first half comes to an end. So the New England Patriots in domination, five sacks of Jim Kelly getting their running game back into the act. Good work by Tony Eason. Uh, strong work overall by the defense. And not done very well. Buffalo Bills have not scored a touchdown against the New England Patriots now in 10 consecutive quarters. Getting back to the New England running game, Lynn Dawson is not going to be back this year. Hannah, of course, is retired, and uh, they're making those yardage other ways though Marv they have more yardage offensively than they had last year and it's because partly because of what we said with the injuries and uh, the retirement but also Eason's having an outstanding year and Grogan is calling the plays now whereas last year he did not call the plays so you know it's it's, it's not how you do it but but the results and what you get done and uh, but we we agree that they need some kind of running game uh, later on in the season and the kickoff by Norwood the deep man is starring. Starring made a nice catch of it. Stefan starring with a pretty return across the 35. Hal Garner, backup linebacker on the stop. 24-yard return. So the Patriots will go to the offense. That is Garner, uh, number 99, being helped off. And led to the line by center, Pete Brock. They go with Tatupu in the backfield, along with James. Great James, the ball carrier. Darrell Talley on the stop. James, well, rushes 36 yards in the first half. Collins carried seven times for only nine yards. James, one of the players that has been upset this year that the running game has not produced a more yardage. And, uh, of course, James has been injured somewhat, uh, had a knee injury, and back in there and healthy at this time. Last year, James ran for 1,227 yards. Eastern going deep. In 
intended for Cedric Jones, covered by Derek Burrows. And it sets up a third down and eight. That's Burrows, who was bothered by shoulder and ankle injuries earlier in the season. He started on opening day against the Jets, had a difficult time, and uh, Rodney Bellinger among several guys to give it a shot at uh, the left cornerback position. Now Burrows is back as a starter. down at a flag throw. Sean McNanny, the left defensive end coming up with the Bills third sack of the day but uh, let's check out this penalty. McNanny number 95. Holding offense number 76 penalty decline fourth down. And that is the left tackle of Brian Holloway. Smith, number 78, is working on Holloway. As from the other side, McNanny. McNanny, a third-round draft choice in his third year. And uh, Ben Williams, he's taken Ben Williams' place. Uh, ben Williams retired this year. McNanny, is, uh, the job is his. They want him to come in and do the job. There's Camarillo, who had his last punt block. This time, no problem. Ron Pitts on the return. He got hit hard, reaching out toward the 40-yard line. A 38-yard punt by Camarillo. Milford Hodge and Steve Doy, a couple of recent additions to the squad, hit on the tackle. Raymond Berry had the special teams unit introduced rather than the offensive or defensive starting lineups at the start of today's game. That's a nice touch. Uh, they worked just as hard as the other players. It is a first down from the 40-yard line. Off the roll, Kelly took a good hit and goes incomplete. Raymond Claiborne on the coverage of Andre Reed. And you're not supposed to get hit as a quarterback when you throw on first down and especially play action first down. Kelly probably thought that it's going to be a good down to throw on. It's going to be first down coming out in the second half, and that wasn't the case. They continue to get good pressure on Jim Kelly. And Kelly now four for nine, only 33 yards, has had a horror show to this point. He comes in completing 60% of his passes, 15 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Could not get going here today. Now picks up the first down. Byram out of the backfield, stopped by James. A 16 yard gain. James, the only member of that defensive backfield that has been injured in the last two years. Missed one game earlier this year, but aside of that, uh, those four starters have been together for the last year and a half and have played very well. And James had a good one last week against the Rams. Byram. Straight ahead move. Brings inside the 40-yard line. Fred Marion, the free safety, the man who leads the Patriots in total tackles. Adding another one uh, to the list. There's Marion. That defense is so tough, Marv. Uh, they're, they're a physical defense. They do a lot of uh, stripping of the ball. They uh, take aways, a lot of sacks and interceptions. But speed and quickness is their trademark. They're very quick. Down five from the 38. And Byron trying the left side. Steve Nelson. And the front three for the Patriots. In on the stop. And there's Nelson limping off. We mentioned earlier the uh, problem with the left ankle. To look at Nelson, the captain of that defense, the man that calls the signals. Looks like he just gets in a a mess of players and twist that ankle it seems like it's almost common now to see steve lifting off the field in the last few weeks he's had that ankle problem but always seems to come back it's a third and one soaring looking for that first down we'll have to see where they spot the ball a catapulting move by rob reddick <laughs> 
I think he may have got it, Marv. Somebody stuck him pretty good, but he got some good yardage before he was hit. Take a look at the linebackers. Right in the middle of your screen, the two inside linebackers. They're going to come up and fill. I don't know. It was pretty close. And they're calling for the yardsticks. Three and a half gone by. Third quarter. Patriots lead the Bills 15 to 3. Kelly supervising the measurement. And the Bills pick up the first down. Get the ball as deep as you can to the running back so he doesn't have to wait for it. And then he can look and see where a crack might be where he can jump and get the most uh, yardage downfield. But, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, that uh, young quarterbacks, don't get the ball to the, to the running back as deep and as soon as you can. You want to get it to him quickly. Burkett, top of your screen, Reed to the right side and again to the ground. Riddick. Ronnie LaPette tripping up Rob Riddick. Patriots very pleased with the play of LaPette. Seven interceptions on the season. They say a man who is uh, showing more and more confidence and uh, that illustrated by the fact that He's asking more questions at uh, some of the team meetings, although Bob, members of our staff have uh, privately complained that uh, you're asking too many questions <laughs> at our production meeting. That time Kelly had the time and was able to complete for the first down. Byram on the reception in back of Roland James. Kelly just doing what he has to to buy some time. There was nobody wide open downfield, but Kelly in his uh, opportunity to move around a little bit, get somebody downfield and get them open, and that was uh, the reason for the completion. As we look at the 10-minute ticker, the Giants uh, out in front of the uh, Broncos. Houston in front of Indianapolis, 17-3. Buffalo first down of the 23. Here's Riddick. Showing some signs, despite the fact that they have been handcuffed by the Patriots. Obviously, a, a touchdown here, and uh, the right uh, back into it, trailing by the score, 15 to three. Right here, let's uh, pause briefly for station identification. This is the this is WGRZ TV2 Buffalo. Marv Albert, Bob Greasy from Foxborough. New England leads Buffalo 15 to 3 for early third quarter. Second and seven. Buffalo at the New England 20 yard line. And Kelly throwing on the run. And Riddick, but only a short pickup. And Reynolds on the stop. Reynolds in there playing for Steve Nelson, who limped off a few plays earlier. And uh, Nelson's a free agent and is the only healthy linebacker backing up the other the front four linebackers besides Doig, who was just picked up. But, uh, the Patriots' uh, defense being hampered by the injury that Andre Tippett and Kenny Sims, uh, first-round draft choice, defensive end, was out with a bad back. Looks like James hurt his shoulder. Jim Bowman has come on now. Strong safety for the Patriots for this third down and three. Again, the fake. Again, Kelly on the roll. And got it away. It's complete. Intended for Metzelar. Metzelar's 88 is the tight end. Is going to be blocking on Blackman, 55. He loses him. And then he says, okay, let me just sneak out of here. Oh, it looks like it might have been the 98 is Owens, a defensive tackle who just happened to be out there because Kelly was scrambling that way, turns into a linebacker and covers him, and I think uh, he covered him a little bit too well. And we're told that uh, Steve Nelson has a sprained ankle, and he is out the rest of the game. And here is a 34-yard field goal attempt by Nolan. So Norwood, who hit from 48 earlier, now connects from 34. And with eight and a half to go, third quarter, Patriots now lead 15 to six. Here in Foxborough, Scott Norwood, who just connected on that 34-yard uh, field goal, getting ready to kick it off. Patriots now lead the Bills 
by the score of 15 to 6. Cedric Jones and a flag thrown. Jones on the return. Was taken in by Cedric Jones. But a penalty marker is down. Offsides on the kickoff. Another penalty against the Bills. Stanley Morgan indicating we'll take it where it is. Offside on the kicking team. Number 87. Penalty decline. First down. So Dick Hantak, the referee calling it on foot. Roll. 18-yard kickoff return. And the Patriots go to work at their 34-yard line. James and Tatupu are the running backs. So mostly Tatupu getting some work now. Starring in motion. And Tatupu tried the right side. It has been a very tough game physically for the Patriots. Lawrence McGrew, we're told, is now through for the afternoon off a groin pull. Correction on the Steve Nelson injury, at first reported as an ankle, it's a right knee, and he's out the rest of the way. In the first half, right tackle Steve Moore fractured an ankle. Steve Nelson there in the background with the beard, and the player you saw a little earlier was uh, Craig James, who is, uh, uh, they're looking at his shoulder, so the defense, I mean, uh, Rowan James, excuse me, they're looking at his shoulder. Irving Pryor suffered a shoulder injury in the first half, and uh, he's through for the day. Morgan, the intended receiver, covered by uh, Burroughs. They are dropping like flies. And the Patriots come in with a long injury list. Andre Tippett uh, now walking without the crutches and uh, should be back in a couple of weeks. Now with that knee injury, Lynn Dawson, the tight end, is uh, lost for the year. And this is a team, Marv, that had a lot of depth. Uh, with all of the injuries, of course, those backups become starters, and what really is affected is your special teams. And it Sims, out with that lower back screen, the two tight ends, Hawthorne and Scott, sat it out here today. Eason going deep and broken up, intended for Morgan. Robert Weather is injured. Mike Ruth. back and take a look at the life of a nose tackle here's Fred Smurlis right here now he's going to make a good move on Brock but watch the right guard number 61 Ron Wooten he looks to the outside and now Smurlis has his man beat and then the guard is free so when you're a nose tackle you have to beat two players a lot of the time that's one of the reasons you don't get many sacks and the punting unit has come on Rich Camarillo from his 21 Pitts dropping back. Good punt by Camarillo. An excellent coverage by the Patriots. Ed Reynolds leading that onslaught. A 53-yard punt. 7.21 left. Third quarter. Patriots lead 15-6. On the bench, strong safety Roland James, who departed during the course of the last series, entering his right shoulder. Six Patriots starters have been injured today. Five are lost for the game. No later word yet on James. Hills first down from the 18. Byron is stopped by Williams. Toby Williams, the nose tackle. And Marvel with that has forced the uh, Patriot defense to do is go to a four down lineman and three linebackers. Normally they like to play four linebackers, but they only have three healthy linebackers that know the defense. There's a list of the injured players today. Three offensively and two defensively, and Rowan James was on that list. He's also out at this time. Second down and seven. Kelly getting the tie and able to hit the tight end. Metzelar refusing to go down. Blackman. Pet combining on the stop. And we've been informed that Roland James with a bruised right shoulder will make it back. Right now, Jim Bowman replacing him at the strong safety position. Bowman is a, a second-year man out of Central Michigan. It was Craig James, and so far he's healthy. Uh, Roland James, no relation as the, the shoulder injury, but uh, 
Marvin practice now. These these players work together interchangeably. It's not like, oh, you have some new linebackers in there, uh, so do they know what the other guy's going to do? In practice, most of the time, you work interchangeably, and they all know one another's movements. Well, the wave has hit Foxborough. That is the roar that you're hearing with it on the fumble. And it's recovered by the Bills. And the punting unit uh, making the play on, so the Bills drive has been halted once again. One of the beneficiaries of all the injuries is number 52, Johnny Rembert. Watch as he gets over here and causes the fumble. Moves again into the gap that's opened up there. Hits the ball carrier, knocks the ball loose from Riddick. And Rembert with an outstanding game so far today. There's John Kidd back at his eight-yard line. And his third season out of Northwestern. And punting to Stephen Starr. Starr looked like he was fooled. Was about to call for the fair pass. So it is down, and the Patriots will take over the 30-yard punt. We'll be back in just a moment. Taking an inside look at the NFL, even without the Jets to pick on on Thanksgiving Day. First down from the 38-yard line, and here's Eason. And that's his first completion. This third quarter has a first down with Stanley Morgan. It's a 17-yard game. Easton trying to fire his troops up. Uh, a little surprised. Great James at the tailback. Although uh, Raymond Berry has said that all four of his running backs can play both halfback and fullback. Tony Collins not in the game. Both the two and Craig James in there at this Second catch of the day for Morgan. And a first down at the 45. Play action. Easton now in trouble. And down he goes at midfield. Lost five on the play. Darryl Kelly able to get to Eason. And for Buffalo, their fourth sack of the day, and Tally's second this afternoon. There he is, number 56, Darryl Kelly. Very tall, explosive player. Has uh, what they call big play potential. They go 6-4. 227 pounds. I think to this point in his career, Mar, you really have to say it's been a disappointment because he was out of the lineup last year and now has worked his way back in, but they had high expectations, but really waiting for him to produce. It is a second and 14. And again, the chase. And Eason runs it out. So the Bills now putting pressure on. Defensive lineman cross charging and that throws him off as Brock is trying to block on Smith 78. Tony's going to win that race any day of the week with Smurlis and Smith. Plus, uh, he spots him about uh, about 50 pounds. I'm sure Smurlis is weighing in around 265, 270, and uh, Easton can't weigh more than 210. It is a third down and 14. Patriots now with changes on that offensive line because of the injuries to uh, Fairchild and Moore. And Eason able to complete. But it's short of the first down. Tony Collins on the reception. Portion of the crowd urging Raymond Burry to go for it. Just because the punting team is coming on doesn't mean that they're going to punt the ball away. This is an area of the field inside the other team's 40-yard line where if you were going to try something uh, with the lead, it would be uh, uh, one of the areas where you might do it. And, uh, of course, if you don't lose it, then uh, your defense can come on and stop stop the Bills. Camarillo dropping back to his 47-yard line, a sixth punt of the day. He did have one blocked earlier. There's Pitts. Back at his 10. Ron Pitts spent the first six games on injured reserve with a foot injury. And it's angled out. 
Pitts on no return for Pitts. And the Bills take over. It goes down as a 28-yard punt. And a timeout call. We'll be back. Well, the Buffalo Bills trailing the New England Patriots 15 to 6, but despite the fact the Bills have played so poorly, they're right in this ball game. They are, and uh, the, the Patriot defense has done a nice job, and sometimes your best drives aren't until the end of the game, and as long as Buffalo is only nine points behind, all they need is a touchdown and a field goal. And uh, Kelly, as poor as he's played, uh, still has an opportunity to bring his team back and win the ball game. Now, Jim Kelly was unhappy earlier this season because Hank Fuller would not allow him to unleash. He likes to go for the bomb, and uh, to this point, of course, he's had trouble finding his receivers, but has not uh, looked deep very frequently. Kelly able to complete. Jimmy Teal on the reception. Ronnie LePet made the stop. First down off the 11-yard pickup. Giants now leading Denver 13-9 to in the... Uh, third quarter. Patriots are looking at that game, too, uh, because uh, they have uh, the Jets and the Broncos that they're fighting for. And Cleveland and Pittsburgh in a shootout, 28-21 now. The Browns on top. Riddick stopped at the line. Rob Riddick was uh, hit by a combination of Owens and Reynolds. It'll be a second and 10. Riddick has carried 11 times for 26 yards. Setting the Bills up front, Kent Hull, the first-year man out of Mississippi State. One-time uh, New Jersey general of the USFL is the center. Jim Richer, Will Wolford are the guards. Joe Devlin and Tim Volker are the tackles. Volker for the injured Ken Jones. Reed bumped out at the 33 by LaPet. Andre Reed. With his second catch of the day. You mentioned Tim Vogler in there at uh, left tackle in the place of Jones is doing a pretty good job. He is opposite to uh, Garen Barris who came into this game with nine sacks and is their leading pass rusher now that uh, Andre Tippett is uh, on the injured list. Third down and seven. And at 15 remaining in this third quarter. And Kelly going deep and able to complete to Burkett. So Chris Burkett hammered down by Fred Marion, but a 19-yard pickup. Just an excellent throw by Kelly and a good, tough catch by Burkett. There's tight man-to-man -man coverage in the receivers downfield. And there are two deep safeties just watching Kelly. And as soon as he throws it, Marion, I believe it is, comes up and makes the hit right there. And Burkett hung onto the football. Now, Marion and James are the two safeties that sit deep and just react when Kelly throws the football. That is the longest reception of the day for the Bills. First catch for Burkett. And a first down as Kelly goes sideline and heating it up now. Hit it. First down and some more out by Claiborne and Marion and suddenly Kelly is finding his receivers. Well there was a mix up in the defensive secondary. Claiborne was real deep and there was no one short to catch the uh, receiver out there in the flat but uh, hard to say uh, one thing's for sure Marv Levy has done an outstanding job. Uh, we heard that he was a good mo because they've come out and uh, played very well the second half. Buffalo first down at the New England 22. Riddick in motion. And Kelly now only looking past. He feels he's on fire, and he is. And they'll mark that at the uh, point where Reed's forward progress was stopped by Roland James. And Roland James is back on the field. Bothered by the uh, shoulder problem earlier and was replaced by Jim Bowman. Clock running down. As we approach the end of the third quarter, and there's the gun, so at the end of three with the Bills on the move. New England 15, Buffalo 6. We'll be back after these words. Going into today's play, this the rundown of the AFC East. The uh, Jets play the Dolphins in Miami tomorrow night. New England at 8 and 3. Talking to some of the Patriots players, they're a little bit frustrated that they've won five games in a row. They're 8 and 3. 
and they can't gain any ground on the New York Jets. The Jets have won nine in a row, and they've lost ground, as a matter of fact. But New England is at the same place this year as they were last year, eight and three. Fourth quarter, underway. Buffalo, first down. At the New England 11. And Kelly on a swing, and it is really picked off. Brent Williams deflecting it. Exception by Carl Byron. And Byron was uh, able to make the catch. Well, Brent Williams is right here. He's a seventh round draft choice. He's going to try to get the ball right out here now. He's going to come up and almost Seven makes play. the interception as he's trying to contain Kelly. Gets upfield. Devlin tries to throw a chop block on him, goes right through his hands. Could have been an interception. Wouldn't that have been a nice play? Seeing Brent Williams trying to outrun Kelly. It's a loss on the play. It'll set it back to a second down and 16 and a timeout. Timeout called by Buffalo. Their first timeout. So Kelly to the sideline. And we'll be back after these words. It's a, a cool, crisp New England day. Marv Albert and Bob Briefy. For early fourth quarter, Jim Kelly showing signs. Only four of eight, 33 yards in the first half. He's connected on 10 of 12 here in the second half. And suddenly has respectable statistics. 14 of 20, 131 yards. Second down and a 16 from the 17. And Kelly again able to complete. Byron. Down at the six, stopped by Ed Reynolds. Carl Byron out of the backfield. And what is the difference in the way Kelly has been able to operate here in the second half? I think he's just getting better protection, Marv. He's throwing on first down, and when they do throw on first down, they've been successful. It's just, uh, I think it goes back to halftime. I think it's something that Levy said has brought him out here. They look much more confident, and you can see it in that man right there. He just, just the confidence is there. Now third down and five. Andre Reed, 83, comes across. And Kelly now under pressure. Don Blackman with the Patriots' sixth sack of the day, and that's a significant one to stop this Buffalo drive. They now will have to settle for three. The one thing you don't want to do here is take a sack, as you see Varus, number 60, good pressure. The big linebacker comes from the outside, Blackman, who is really overshadowed by Tippett, and uh, Kelly sits up and takes uh, notice, but... Uh, Blackman is getting some of the uh, some of the play now since Tippett has been out of the lineup. Scott Norwood attempting from 34 yards away. He hit from 34 and from 48 earlier. Don Kidd will put it down. And Norwood does it again. Three field goals for Scott Norwood. So the Bills are chipping away with two minutes gone by. Fourth quarter, they now trail by six. New England defensive coordinator Rod Rust, who uh, goes back a ways with the man across the field, new Buffalo head coach Marv Levy. Rod's defense playing very well against Buffalo has not allowed a Buffalo touchdown against his Patriots in the last 11 quarters. And uh, talking with Raymond Berry, he says, I don't know anything about defense. He says, if you want to know about defense, go talk to Rod. He says, he knows all about it. And the man that's his quarterback on defense was right in front of him, Steve Nelson, who is uh, injured as the ball is blown off the tee, but uh, the brain trust, as it were, for the Patriots, uh, injured on the sidelines. Steve Nelson calling the uh, defenses, and Rod Rust doing an outstanding job. Uh, Nelson calls him a genius, and uh, Rust was the first assistant rehired by Raymond Berry when he took over the club uh, last year, or the year before last, last year being his first full year. Rod Rust was an assistant with Marv Levy in Montreal up in uh, Canada in the uh, Canadian Football League in the 70s and worked under Marv Levy in Kansas City from 78 to 82. Raymond Barry, who is 4-0 lifetime against the Buffalo Bills. All right, let's see, Norwood will try again.
Penalty flag thrown. Beautiful kickoff return by Stephen Starring. He's averaging better than 23 yards per return, which leads the AFC. The kicker, Norwood, on the tackle of Starring. And did you see Norwood hit Starring? hit Starring's elbow with his chin. Boy, he really knocked him down. <laughs> Holding on the return, number 64, 10 yard penalty, first down. The Patriots are uh, Back on offense as Eason trying to go wide. And the fans not liking it. The momentum of this game has changed completely as Buffalo with three field goals is back in the game and just one touchdown away from taking the lead. It'll be a second and 13. But it's gone by. It was fourth quarter. And Eason able to complete Ray Bentley, making the stop on Craig James. Picked up five on the play. It'll be a third down and eight. And another Patriot is shaken up. It's been a costly day in the injury department. Five starters have been knocked out of the lineup. The most serious injury was suffered by the right tackle Steve Moore, a fractured ankle. Steve Nelson hurting his knee. Lawrence McGrew with a groin pull. Irving Fryer, a, a shoulder. Paul Fairchild, a groin injury. Roland James hurt his shoulder, but he was able to return. That's in addition, Marv, to uh, coming into the game. Uh, Greg Hawthorne not playing a tight end, and Willie Scott, uh, both tight ends, both not able to play because of injury. So the Patriots are being hit, to, and here with Haley's injury, uh, hitting at the same position with Moore and Haley both being uh, right tackles. Swing around the scoreboard, Giants maintaining the lead. On Denver, Chicago now in front of Green Bay, 9-3. Cincinnati over Minnesota. And Pittsburgh and Cleveland now, even at 28. Mark Malone ran it in from a yard away. Houston destroying Indianapolis and Detroit over Green Bay. Now Trevor Maddich has come on at right tackle, so he's the third man to play the position here this afternoon as Haley went to the sideline. It's a third down and eight from the 19. Try to step up and completes to the tight end Beatty for first down. Dwight Green, first year player out of Oklahoma, on the stop. Beatty with his third catch of the day. And a big first down for the Patriots. Eason just buying some time. It's amazing as I watch Tony Eason, the maturity that he has shown in the last year, year and a half. Uh, last year he was uh, maybe a little bit of a doghouse uh, for Raymond Berry, but uh, this year certainly the leader of the team. And James coughed it up. But recovered by the right guard, Ron Wooten. Hey, James was a little bit surprised that the, the man was in the backfield there. Tatupu blocking on his linebacker was stuffed, and that caused James to slow down and allow the defensive lineman to get in there and hit him. That's a play that they run a lot, but you normally don't get hit from that angle. Second and 12. Back of the 30, Easton now 17 to 26, 161 yards. Over to complete the game. 
short advance, Ray Bentley, the linebacker, number 50, uh, covering on the play. And the Patriots are struggling. You saw the graphic a moment ago. The Bills have taken away the play. In the second half, Jim Kelly is turning it around. Well, the momentum certainly is uh, wearing a blue jersey at this point. As you saw, the Buffalo defense fired up and the Patriot offense injured. It's a third and 11. Look out. And Eason hit for the loss. McNanny and Prater all over Eason. Yeah, the Patriots now hearing it from the crowd. So Rich Camarillo checks in, and Buffalo will get his hands back on the football. Just a low snap. The ball goes right past him. And this is one of those situations, if you're Raymond Berry, you just say, run out of bounds. I don't want you getting hurt. Weirder things have happened. And Eason has fallen on, on his right leg. I thought for a second he may be injured, but he's moving around all right. And Camarillo punting from his 10. It puts to the 40. Guy Mars on the stop, 41-yard punt. And a six-yard return, just under nine minutes to go. Fourth quarter, Patriots 15, Buffalo 9. Buffalo will start out from its 44-yard line with eight minutes and 55 seconds left. And this fourth quarter here in Foxborough, Marv Albert with Bob Greasy. And the Bills trailing by the score of 15 to 9. They were down at the half, 15-3. Kelly completes to the tight end, Metzelon. Battling his way toward the first down marker. The six foot seven Metzelon looking to uh, use his strength on Ronnie LaPette. It's interesting, Marv, that the Patriots scored the 15, the first 15 points of the game, leading 15 to nothing. It looked like it was going to be an easy day for the Patriots, and a lot of times what happens maybe you'll let up a little bit and the other team gets a field goal block punt just before half gets a field on the on the board and they get back into the game as we look at ronnie lapet uh, limping on the sidelines and uh, i'm sure rod rust is going to say i don't have many more defensive players to put in uh, stop this thing Dennis gibson a three-year man from Turner. usually a nickel back replacing lapet at the left corner first down was collected by metzelize at the 46. Kelly again, same pattern for Metzelar. So Kelly is now 17 for 23. Remember, he was four for eight and struggling at halftime. He certainly was, and the, the defense is changing a little bit now. They're, they're very injured, obviously, as we have said, but they're attacking more. Kelly is, uh, seems to have found his rhythm. This time, they're blitzing more to try and not allowing him have much time to throw. <laughs> Second and eight. And Kelly turning it around. He has a rough time of the other again against the Patriots in Buffalo. Well, oh, Byron stopped by Ed Reynolds. Had a short advance. One of the things that Marv Levy said he wanted to do was to get this team to play better in the second half. They have played well in a lot of the games in the first half, but like last week against Miami in Buffalo, they folded their tents in the second half. This time, he has got them playing well in the second half. Buffalo, one point, led the Dolphins, 21-7. Kelly throws the middle, broken up. Claiborne got a hand on it. Covering Reed. So the Patriots stopped the Bills as Andre Reed. Well, that was an outstanding play by Claiborne. Uh, the throw was there. The blitz was coming. There was no men in the middle of the field, and Claiborne just dove 
made an outstanding play. A man, Claiborne, has never missed a game. In college, high school, or professional has been there when the bell is rung. And here's Kidd with starring back. Sixth punt of the day. With John Kidd and pops it high. And carries out. Across the 25-yard line, a flag has been thrown. It's against the Bills, a holding call. Holding. Offense. Number 56. Penalty decline. First down. Darrell Talley called on the penalty, declined by the Patriots. So the Patriots will take over. <laughs> Ball spotted across the 21 yard line. 22 yard punch for Kidd. Join us Thursday for the tradition of Thanksgiving Day football right here on NBC Sports. The Seahawks and the Cowboys from Dallas. It gets underway starting 3.30 with Bob Costas and NFL 86. and an interception by Smolis. So the Bills with a big turnover. <laughs> and he says, did you see me did you see me bust that ball, huh? I intercepted it and wouldn't tell his kids about all this. He's going to say it was a 20-yard rerun. Give him the high fives and the whole works. Smolis has been under some pressure this year from some of the people saying that he's not playing as well as he has in the past. I think it was Smurlis who had his hand up and who made the interception. That's a big turnover for the Bills. Brett Smurlis, a one-time Pro Bowl man, feels he's turned it from the off year of 1985. His first interception of the season and a first down. That time the reverse attempted. And Garen Harris was right there to spot it. Andre Reed hit hard and had some words with Barris. Well, Garen Barris, the second year player, playing the defense the way it's supposed to be played and when the offense is not going well, as it's not right now for the Patriots, it's the defense that has kept the Bills from getting in the end zone. A loss of four on the play, second and 14 from the 21. The crowd urges the Patriot defense on. Kelly throws in zone. The recovery by Burkett, who felt he was tripped up and was still in position to make the catch. A uh, very good second effort by Chris Burkett. Well, he was tripped up, or he was tripped. Whether or not uh, LePet tripped him or not, it was hard to see, but uh, he did stumble a little bit, but did uh, regain his uh, feet and almost made the catch. Third down and 14 off the interception by Smollett. Buffalo Bills with an opportunity. And Kelly able to complete the foot of the first down. Reed making the catch. Hammered by Bowman. This defense is so tough, Mark. Sometimes they're aggressive and they'll come after you. Other times they'll contain you. Now, they knew where the first down marker was. They made him complete the pass inside, and then Bowman makes the sure tackle. And still, the Bills have not scored in 11 quarters, not scored a touchdown against the Patriots defense. They're going to try and do it with field goal. So they held three yards short on this fourth down and three. 27 yard attempt for Norwood, who is three for three on the day. It puts it down. And Norwood does it again. Five minutes. So the fourth field goal of the day for Scott Norwood. And with 523 remaining in this fourth quarter, the Patriots now clinging to a three-point lead. 
believe he is certainly pleased with the way his troops have played the second half coming back against an excellent team like the Patriots. He kind of chuckled when I asked him about this week, and he says, well, the Patriots are a very, very tough ball club. He didn't know how they were going to do coming up here to, to Foxborough. A look at the playoff race as try to make a judgment in terms of the wild card uh, situation. Still a long way to go, but uh, you can see uh, the tightness of it with New England coming in at 8-3, Denver 9-2, and, two, and uh, the Raiders at 8-4. There are seven teams on that panel. Only five will get in uh, the playoff. Of course, the bottom two will be the wild card team, but uh, that's a good graphic to show you exactly what this game means to New England and also to Denver. Denver playing the Giants in, uh, in the Meadowlands and uh, and losing at this point. If Denver loses and New England wins, they're tied at 8-3. and three, And uh, if New England doesn't win the division, at least they would host a uh, wild card game here in Foxborough. And the Patriots have a tough schedule ahead at New Orleans next week. And home for Cincinnati and San Francisco and uh, finish up at Miami. The kickoff by Nolan. Starring just shy of the 30. Tony Ferjanic <laughs> on the stump. Ferjanic just saying, I'm just making sure he's down. He was kind of turning his helmet a little bit. Got to be out looking through his ear hole for long for Jennings. I just want to make sure you're down. And uh, a look at the upcoming uh, schedule. You can see the combined record of the New England opponents at 24, 19, and 1. Well, that is a, that's a rugged final four to face. This is a key drive offensively for the Patriots right here. They, they're only three points ahead. They need to control the football. First down from the 29. Drew and Williams back in at the wide receiver. And Eason looking that way, but goes short. Good second effort by Mosi Tatupu. Martin Bayless thought he had him, but Tatupu would not go down. You know, Mark, this is an area where last year the Patriots would come out and just run the football and control the football and keep it away from you. We talked earlier about how the Patriots need a running game, and this is one of the reasons why they could use a good running game. They could control the ball, control the clock. Now, they may try and do it now with their situation with the short passes, similar to what they just did with Tatupu. The people picked up nine, a second down and one at the 38. Five minutes left, fourth quarter. And Mosey again, but he is short of the first down. Patriots also going with quite a bit of shuffling on the offensive line, although Darrell Haley is back at right tackle. Brian Holloway on the left side. Ron Wooten and Guy Morris at the guards. Morris for the injured Paul Fairchild. And uh, Pete Brock, a guy who's battling those bad knees, is the center. And having a good year. The center is the mainstay in any offensive line, and Brock certainly is in this uh, line. Third down and two, a loss of one on that play. And he's a good pressure. The Buffalo Bills coming up with their fifth sack of the day. We'll have to wait and see who receives credit for that sack. Looked like uh, Sean McManney. Levy said, one of the things I'm going to do a little differently today is I'm going to put more defensive linemen in the game. Last week, the Dolphins had to play, had to ball 80 offensive plays, and he left his three linemen in there the entire game. He said, this week I want to keep him fresh, and he's getting better results. More sacks. It was McManney. On that sack, his fifth of the day, and here's Camarillo coming from his 16-yard line. High snap. And a short punt. A poor punt by Camarillo. The clock stopped with 3.44 remaining in this fourth quarter. Only a 31-yard punt. And that is, he is punting yeah. into a win, Marv. It's about a 15, 20-mile-an-hour win. Certainly nothing that Camarillo is not used to practicing here as much as they do but uh, still it's a uh, it's a slight win and Buffalo has it at their back
Buffalo starting out from the 40-yard line. Running back to Byron and Riddick. They've gone all the way. That's Riddick peeling off. And Kelly has caught fire in the second half, going the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Byram. He was late. He was looking around, and then by the time he got back to Byram, Byram has already passed where the ball was thrown, and he just threw it a little bit to, too late. Checking out the Buffalo schedule. And this is uh, really an opportunity for Marv Levy to make judgments uh, for next season. They're at Kansas City next week. And then home for Cleveland. They close at Indianapolis and at Houston. So they finish with three of four on the road. Second down, 10. Again, Riddick in motion. Kelly was looking for Riddick and has him. And Riddick with a... Some good moves following the reception, picking up 27 yards on the play. Marriott and uh, Claiborne had a tough time pulling him down. They're doing the halfback motion out of the backfield. Riddick right here is going to come here. Now watch what it does to Claiborne. It forces him to go back, and then Riddick is just going to come down and break to the outside. Loosens Claiborne. Inside man drives down. Riddick hangs the sideline. It's a big play for Buffalo. The first down at the New England 31 with just under three minutes left in the game. And it's Riddick again. Touchdown. Oh. Rob Riddick on a 31-yard pass play coming out of the backfield of the Bills. Take an 18-15 lead on the Patriots. And they have finally scored a, a touchdown against New England. It almost seemed like sooner or later, Buffalo was going to score. As you see, Kelly's going to throw to his left again. Riddick on the same type of pattern. Sticks it in there the same place. This time he steps inside of Claiborne and breaks the tackle and gets into the end zone. But it seemed like it was just a matter of time before Buffalo finally cracked the goal line. <laughs> Now the five for the extra point by Scott Norwood, who has had a magnificent day with four field goals. And that a significant extra point to give the Bills a four-point lead. Jim Kelly is now 20 for 29, 223 yards, and he's able to connect with Rob Riddick. Riddick just went by the lower part of the screen, right down the same type of pattern we just drew up. And this time he gets inside and gets a touchdown, Marv. But Riddick, the big play man for Marv Levy coming off of the, uh, the, well, the reserve squad since Bell has been injured. Uh, Levy coming in, uh, taking over, putting in some of the backup players, and Riddick coming in and doing an outstanding job. Two negative streaks on the line here this afternoon for the Buffalo Bills. They have lost 21 straight on the road. Their last road win, December the 4th, 1983, in Kansas City. And they have been beaten by the Patriots eight straight times. The last win over New England by Buffalo, December 13th, 1981, here at Foxborough. And I think it's, 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 it's only fair to say again that the Patriots defensively have been banged up all day long. They play without Tippett and Sims. Nelson is out. They have to go to a 4-3 defensive line. And Bob, I don't think the Bills have to be reminded that they have lost five fourth quarter leads this season. 2-15 remaining. Fourth quarter. Here's Norwood with the kickoff. And Stephen Starring on the return. the Patriots to the offense with 2.40 remaining in this fourth quarter starring run out by Pitts as we swing around the 10-minute ticker the Giants maintaining the lead over Denver Chicago over Green Bay Cincinnati leading Minnesota you know what I'm thinking of right now Marvin I know that the Patriot players are thinking they were in the same situation last week at Los Angeles against the Rams but only it was worse that gives them a lot of confidence that they can win this game. There's not a player out there that doesn't think the Patriots can win. First down for the 39. 
Patriots go with the three wideouts. He's in trouble and able to complete for Collins. But a short pickup. Tony Collins was the safety valve man. Eugene Marr on the tackle. Picked up four. It's a second down. And six. Clock running. We're down to 2.20 remaining. Fourth quarter. The Patriots have not scored on their last seven possessions. They need one here. Again, the short flip. So Collins runs it out. Shy of the first down. Rodney Bellinger on the coverage. And the clock is stopped. It will be a third down and one. It was interesting reading some of the quotes of the players after that Ram game last week when they threw the Hail Mary pass. Some of them were saying, you know, a couple of years ago, we would have all known that we were going to lose that game. But before, before they went out for their last play, they knew somehow, some way, they were going to win that football game. And that's the confidence that you have, especially this week, after having done it last week. It just builds on itself. Third and one. And it's a touchdown. Picked up by Collins. So a big play for New England. Sanford on the stop with a minute and 59 remaining in this fourth quarter. A timeout called when we resume. Patriots first down. Five Albert with Bob Greasy from Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. A dull first half. Patriots in domination of the Bills. They led 15-0 at one stretch. They led up the half 15-3. But a turnaround by Buffalo, sparked by Jim Kelly in the second half, bringing the Bills back into it. Kelly capping it off with that 31-yard touchdown pass to the running back, Rob Riddick. And so here are the Bills coming from behind now with a 19-15 lead. And the Patriots in a position to do some damage with 1.59 left in the fourth quarter. And Eason, following that completion a moment ago to Tony Collins, has a first down at the Buffalo 37. It's interesting. Now, this year, as opposed to last year, the difference in Tony Eason. This year, he's making the plays. He is the man they're counting on. Last year, late in the season and in the playoffs, they were going to their running game because Eason was not playing that well. Now he is the man. He's the one that makes the plays, and he's the one that he's looking, they're looking to to take them into the end zone. Eason asking for quiet, facing six defensive backs. And Eason able to complete again for another first down for Stanley Morgan. play. Make it a 24-yard pass play. Here's Morgan. He's going to come down and break to the inside of the field. There's going to be a big opening here in the inside. As you see, corner comes up in bump and then lets him go. Morgan finds the alley. Nice read by Eason and good protection to get the ball downfield. Morgan goes behind the linebackers. Sees a little alley in there. There's another receiver that was in front of the linebackers that helped pull them up. Well-designed play and a good throw. It had been a quiet day for Morgan. That is only his third reception of the afternoon. And how telling is that stat right there? The Bills this season. They have been in every game they've played except the first New England game when they got beat by 20 or 22 points. I think it was. They lost two tough games to the Jets. They lost in overtime in Cincinnati. Lost to Kansas City by three, but it spells out a record of three and eight uh, no matter how uh, the losses take place. When Levy came in, he said there's more talent here on this team than there was in Kansas City when he started in Kansas City in 78. And also, uh, Fred Smurlis earlier also made the comment that they have more talent on this Buffalo team than they had in 1980, and they had some pretty good teams in 1980 in Buffalo. Now Morgan is to the left side. Minute 46 remaining. Fourth quarter, first down at the 13. Decent throwing in Touchdown. The tight end, Greg Beatty. Beating White Green.
the rookie Beatty working on Green just releases upfield and then breaks to the outside. The ball is right on the money. And the driving force, Tony Eason, brings him back and does what he has to do. It's in the end zone. Now the ball also by Franklin. So the first NFL touchdown for the rookie from Stanford, Greg Lady, will be back in a moment. taking the Patriots down the field in a hurry, capping it off with the touchdown pass to the rookie tight end, Greg Beatty, drawing the starting assignment today. Greg Hawthorne, bothered by a calf injury. Willie Scott with a groin pull. And Beatty, a happy guy after catching his first NFL touchdown. A minute and 40 remaining in this fourth quarter. is Harmon across the 30. A 16-yard return. Steve Goy and Moshi Tatupu involved on the stop, and Goy had an outstanding day on special teams. Well, he was brought in earlier in the week. He's from this area. And that is uh, Ronnie Harmon who came in with an ankle problem, hobbling off. of the rookie from Iowa. Buffalo with two timeouts, one minute, 35 seconds. And a two-minute drill coming up. And this crowd very much into it. Kelly able to complete at midfield. Andre Reed. A 19-yard pass play, and they have a hot quarterback. Jim Kelly, who has got a 360 in the second half. First down at midfield. Now the swing. Gary Wilkins out of the backfield for his first reception of the day, covered by Don Blackman. Wilkins, a guy who can go both at tight end. In fact, he is the first string tight end. And uh, also will occasionally line up at the fullback position. He's a first-year player out of Georgia Tech. Second and five at the New England. 44. Patriots by three. A minute ten left. Fourth quarter. And it is intercepted by LeBron. for the second time today. Kelly just forces it, look to the right, as LePet, knowing he has Mary in number 31 deep to help, he guards him a little underneath him. In other words, he didn't have to worry about him going deep. He knows that he has help deep, so he cuts underneath for the interception. The Patriots, one of the best teams in the league in taking the ball away, to a fair to steal the victory. As he cut it for the wide receiver, he fumbled that ball, Mark. See the flags being thrown. Patriots just looking to run the clock down with 58 seconds remaining now in this fourth quarter. He, he was just going to kneel down and he dropped the football. The whistle may have blown before the ball was snapped. We have the illegal procedure on the defense. They hit the ball yeah. prior to snapping. Yeah. First down. That's Fred Smurless. Yeah. <laughs> the old trick. The old veterans like Smurless know that trick. It's just before the center snaps the ball, he hits it with his hand. <laughs> I don't know if we've got a shot of that or not, but that's that's been tried before. I think George Allen, back when in the, uh, I think it was Super Bowl seven when we were playing the Redskins in L.A. And we uh, we were running out the clock and they had not a chance to win the game. George Allen had one of his defensive linemen slap the ball, and we fumbled it, but of course, uh, the official was right there and, and made the call. Swirlis must have been watching that game. A 
playground maneuver attempted by Fred Smurlis. Here it is. Right, right there. Just slapped the ball. Nobody hiked it. He didn't hike it. It wasn't fumbled. He just... <laughs> and the clock reset. A minute two remaining. Buffalo with two timeouts remaining. And a timeout has been called. And right, right here, it's time for the most, most valuable player award, sponsored by Budweiser and today's MVP, that man, Tony Eason. In his fourth year out of Illinois, Tony Eason. Our MVP today, Budweiser, will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected uh, throughout the NFL. And Eason, 24 out of 34, 229 yards. One touchdown, and that the one that has put New England on top, completing to the rookie tight end, Greg Beatty. Maybe so Eason with a, a terrific day. Maybe has to be happy, Marv, with the job that uh, Buffalo has done. It's frustrating when you lose in the second half again. One of the things he wanted to try and overcome, but what can you say about Eason? Last year, he threw 17 interceptions all year. This year, to this point, only with four interceptions, and uh, he did what he had to do. He wasn't, they didn't do a lot in the second half. But they came out and scored the touchdown when they needed it. Patriot point of view, the upside, of course, holding on for the victory here. Uh, the fact that it, they did show some signs in the running game and going against a, a Buffalo club that has played well against the run. The downside, a huge number of injuries. Six starters knocked out of it here today. Uh, Steve Nelson, Lawrence McGrew, Steve Moore, fractured ankle, suffered by Moore, Irving Fryer with a shoulder, forced Paul Fairchild, a groin injury. Uh, Roland James was sidelined briefly, but he was able to return. And uh, Cedric Jones also uh, apparently was injured late in the game, and we have not seen much of Cedric. In fact, uh, Derwin Williams was lined up as a second and a third receiver in the fourth quarter. It's that time of year, Marv, that if you don't have some injuries, you probably have not been playing football, maybe volleyball or some other non-contact sport, but... It's going to happen. The Jets, uh, who are leading this division by by two games, have had a, uh, a load of injuries to their defensive line, and uh, they have uh, overcome those injuries. And that's why uh, you have backups and you have depth. That's why you have preseason games to establish that depth. Now the uh, the Patriots are certainly feeling the brunt of that injury. Third down play. And uh, the clock is stopped. No, they're not stopping the clock. Clock's still running now. We're down to 40 seconds. Buffalo using its final timeout. And it's a fourth down, fourth and four coming up. And the Patriots will just uh, let it run down. Well, the Buffalo team has come a long way in a year uh, with the signing of Jim Kelly and what he has done. The attendance is up. Uh, Averaging, I think, close to 69,000 were last year they averaged 37. So with the signing of one man and Marv Levy coming in, things certainly look good for Buffalo. Well, Bob, they can let the 30-second clock uh, run out. Now the flag is thrown. And the only thing they can hope for, of course, is another block punt. And the differential is the five seconds, so Patriots will be penalized with five seconds remaining. Now they have a uh, three-point lead, 22-19, and a punting situation. Well, the question here is, do you punt? We have delay of the game on number 11, five-yard penalty, fourth down, timeout New England, their first timeout. Now they're deciding on the sideline right now. Raymond Berry is going to make this call. Do we go ahead and punt the football, or can we eat up five seconds by just taking the snap from center and just running around back there? Uh, or do you take a safety? Well, that's the other thing. If you snap the ball, where is the ball? The ball's on the 22-yard uh, line. If you take the ball from center, 
you better make sure you get back in the end zone or if the ball, if the uh, clock doesn't run out, if the five seconds don't run out before you get in the end zone, then uh, the uh, clock will stop with a change of possession and you'll give the other, you'll give Buffalo the ball maybe on the three yard line with one second on the clock. So all those things were going over, they were going over in that little huddle and it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Most coaches are reluctant to uh, take the safety. Well, I think if they were closer, if they were on the five-yard line, they would take the safety in a minute and then get a free kick, uh, kick the ball downfield. I think what they're going to do is just do the, the expected and hope the block well up front and kick the ball away. Amarillo did have a punt block earlier, and he's punting from his eight. Here they come, and he got it away. Ron Pitts on the return is tied. So the Patriots come from behind after the Bills had come from behind, and the Patriots win it 22 19. And the streaks continue for Buffalo. So they have lost nine straight to the Patriots, 22 straight on the road. On the other side of the ledger, New England now extends to a record of nine and three. They have won six in a row and seven of their last eight, their last loss to the Jets back in mid-October here in Foxborough, while Buffalo drops to a record of three and